final um, one in the series, we've examined the zygoma, we've done the mandible, mid-face fractures, often associated with high velocity, high impact, uh, so road traffic accidents, so of course it'll be the whole trauma series for these patients. Uh, if it's a significant uh, injury, usually significant bruising, significant bleeding as well, whether it's epistaxis or bleeding periorally. Uh, so these patients will have what's defined by and described by Lafour, a pattern of three fractures. The Lafour three fractures are quite high up. It's where the whole of the facial skeleton is mobile compared to the calvarium. And Lafour two is infraorbital, and often it's a separation of the zygoma from the maxilla, and a Lafour that's a Lafour 2, that's a Lafour 3, sorry, and then a Lafour 1 is the low level. So recap, Lafour 1, low level, Lafour 2, mid-level, Lafour 3, complete separation of the facial skeleton from the skull. How do we clinically examine that? What we'd see in a high-level fracture is bilateral periorbital ecchymosis, suggesting that the fractures are running either in the orbital rim or the ZF. If you've got a low-level fracture, you don't tend to see that. So they'll have possibly entrapment, possibly limitation of eye movements, possibly proptosis, certainly significant periorbital ecchymosis. The key here is the occlusion again. Big wide mouth for me. Bite together. Do your teeth feel different? Do they look like they've moved? Is there a step? Have they widened? That, that dis, uh, disocclusion or change in occlusion is very sensitive marker of a fracture of the mid-face. We're assuming that the jaw is intact, however. And the bottom jaw is intact. So what we do, again, if you've got a patient with dentures, you want to make sure you take those out. You want to see if there's any mobility of that mid-face, a very subtle sign. So in a Lafour 1, you'll be able to move it at this level without any movements of the zygoma. And in a Lafour 2, infraorbital rim, movement of the rims there. And at a high level, you will palpate the zygomatic ZF sutures both sides, any movement there any movement there. Difficult to discriminate clinically, very painful for patients. So in fact, what you'd often do is just image them with, uh, with sectional CT scan and that'll be your diagnosis uh, and you plan thereafter. You'll see sometimes a palatal split as well in those low level fractures. And then we're into the territory of the zygoma and the mandible as well. So to summarize, mid-face fracture assessment from above, from behind the patient to see the asymmetry, often there'll be a lot of swelling from in front, low level of 4-1, any movement there, low level two, and then level three at the zygoma, and on your side, low level one, low level two, and low level three, and high level three. Thank you.